Hi crafty friends, this is Donna and welcome to the Whimsy Stamp channel. I'm so excited to be sharing my first project with you today and I'll be using the Goth Star Clear Stamp Set. I'm going to jump right into the coloring of this image and I've stamped out the image onto solar white cardstock using Copic Friendly ink. Now I've sped the video up about three and a half times the normal speed and if you want to skip ahead to where I put the card together I'll have that marker listed down below. I have the caps on the side of the screen for the markers that I'm using for easy reference and I'm coloring in his skin first. I'm using E04 as my darkest shade and I'm just mapping out the areas where there would be shadowing on his skin and then I will come in with an E13 to blend that out. I personally like to use a lot of markers in my blends because I feel like it gives me better shading. So even though the area that I'm coloring is small-ish, I will still use the five markers to create some shading and depth. Next, I'm going to move on to the shirt and I wanted it to be more white, but I went just a little overzealous with my darkest shade. However, I think it still is, it still has a nice contrast to the rest of the image. I wanted to give him black pants and once again I'm using the cool gray markers. This time I just added two darker shades than the shirt color blend I used. I laid the C9 down in the corner areas where there would be shadowing and then I can come in with and blend that out with a C7 followed by C5 and then finally C3 kind of at the very tip of that one forefront knee. One tip I can share with you is that if you're having trouble blending shades together, try going over the area a second time. Sometimes simply just going over that image twice will give you a better blend and smooth out any harsh lines that may be left behind. I'm going for a blue hair with this rocker dude and I'm using my lightest shade to add a wash of color or just wet the paper first. And then I'll start building up the texture by flicking in the darkest shade at the tip of his hair and kind of right on top of his head. Next I'll grab the two lightest shades and just kind of flick those colors in in between where I laid the B29 down. Each lighter shade I'll add just a little more color. So my husband is a musician and while he doesn't have blue hair, he does have a guitar that I've modeled this one after. I left the guitar white, uh, white and colored in the pickguard black. This is really a secondary element and I'm not too worried about adding any shading. If you want to, you can always just add a couple of little highlights with a white gel pen. I will match up his shoes with the same shades as I used for his hair just to kind of tie in all of the colors together. Here I'm sharing with you that I've fussy cut this image and I've used a black marker just to go around the edge of the image. I'm using a background stamp and unfortunately it is currently out of stock but Whimsy carries a ton of great background stamps and stencils that you can easily switch out if you wanted to recreate this card. I've treated the panel of smooth white cardstock with anti-static powder and then I've inked up the stamp using clear embossing ink and pressed that down into place to transfer the ink. Here I'm just grabbing a piece of paper to catch any of the embossing powder I'm adding black embossing powder very generously across my entire panel and then I can shake off any excess and tap it off a couple of times to remove any stray embossing powder. Mm -hmm. 
you'll want to let your heat tool heat up and I've let mine heat up for about 30 seconds before I brought it over to my panel to melt the embossing powder. I am not much of a clean and simple kind of card maker. I like a ton of color in my cards. So I'm going to add a little bit of color and I've grabbed Distress Ink in Violet, uh, Wilted Violet and I'm blending in that corner at the bottom left and just kind of fading it out as I reach the top. I did switch out from using regular Distress Ink to Distress Oxides in the same color and that's because the Distress Oxides are a little more opaque so I feel like I'm going to get a brighter look to my ink blending. At this point I'm ready to start putting my card together. I've trimmed the background panel using the larger die from the Card Builder window die set. I'll add my finished panel to a piece of black cardstock that I've cut down to an A2 sized and adhered it to a white top holding card base. And then I can grab my images and which I've added foam adhesive to the back and finished the card off by adding the sentiment that I've stamped onto black cardstock and white heat embossed. I also did use my scissors to kind of trim out the sentiment and pop them up on foam squares before adding them to my card. And one final touch I did to this card, I grabbed a Copic marker that I felt closely resembled the color of the background and I'm just coloring in the white cardstock that I left in between the stamped image and not fussy cut it out. You could use an X-Acto knife and get in between that cut and cut it out but I don't think it took anything away from my finished card just to color it in. That will finish off my card for today. Let me know what you think or if you have any questions in the comments down below. Also be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell to be notified next time Whimsy uploads a video. Thanks so much for spending a little time with me today and I will see you next time.